Welcome back to FBU Radio. Today we have Rob, who was one of our clients and is now one of our coaches. Indeed. Um, which is a bit mad. It's been a very quick process. Very quick. Um, five months. But yeah, we're gonna uh, we're gonna delve into his journey through fitness, look at um him changing his niche and, and really cracking that and and taking his business off and also just his journey through the fitness industry and into kind of being a coach for coaches as well, I think a little bit. Um, thanks for coming on, mate. Thank you. Thanks All the way me. from sunny Hull. Oh, yeah. It's pissing it down before we left. Was it? Yeah. It's it really it? grim in Hull, isn't it? Do you know what? It's not as bad as people think, actually. Like, there's, I think there's bad areas everywhere, but Hull's a lot better than people think. One of my best been... mates is from Hull, like, originally, and really doesn't have good things to say oh, really? about it. Yeah. See, where we live is quite nice, and the outskirts is nice, but there's certain areas where you're like, yeah, you you, you just wouldn't you won't step go. foot. No, you would not, no. Like, Manchester... Certain areas of Manchester gets a bad rap, but yeah, there's areas of Hull that's not good. I'm really. assuming so. Yeah, similar. But yeah, how did you how did you get into the fitness industry to start with? So I actually got my PT qualification when I was still at school, well, sixth form. So I was oh, like okay. 17, 18. I actually stayed back here, sort of similar to Charlotte we've had on before. I stayed back here because they offered BTEC Sport. Right. And I realized that you didn't have to do exams. And it was just all coursework. And I was like, yeah, that sounds like my thing. Um, but then as part of that, it was like, right, we're also giving you this for free. So like, didn't have to pay anything extra. So I was like, yeah, sound, I'm doing that. And then, but then when I left, I I actually started working just at like Sports Direct, just because I needed obviously some money. Yeah. Um, was probably doing like 30, 35 hours a week there. And I sort of did a, do you remember Precision Nutrition? I did like one of I their do, certifications. Yeah, they're, just, they're still going, I think. Yeah, yeah. So like, um, they were like quite big at the time. And, and so I did one of their sets and then I started sort of helping a few friends for free. Um, and it was something I always wanted to do. And then got a couple of people like really good results. They sort of shared it on Facebook. And then very quickly I was getting these inquiries like, you know, do you do PT or do you do online coaching? And then before I knew it, I'd like two people pay me 50 quid a month. Like didn't have anything set up. It was all done on emails. Like, I'd, you know, I'd look back at it now and, and almost cringe, but that was like effectively how it started. Started sort of PTing a couple of people just on sort of the, the side from work, really. And then I got a, a job working for Monster Supplements. I don't know if you remember Yeah, that. I do. So like I was in, I was basically putting a store in an area where there was no footfall. <laughs> and for like the first three weeks, I think we had about five customers. But in the end, my job was basically people would come in, ask me stuff. And I was like brutally honest and sort of said, this does absolutely nothing. Maybe just go for this and sort of built up a bit of uh, like trust with people. Mm -hmm. And, but then at the time I was uh, within that, I'd also applied for uh, and actually got offered a, a job by Luke Johnson, uh, Luke Johnson at Shreddy by Science, who He's, he's doing the talk on Friday. Yeah, I, for, I forgot Shredded by Science was like the yeah, first business. Yeah, so that was sort of like his, his thing. So I ended up coaching for him. So that was really how I properly got into online coaching. So I, I sort of did it backward where normally if people were going to coach for a company, they'd coach a lot themselves first. Mm. I'd sort of did it with a handful of people and gotten decent results. And then I was just chucked in with him. Uh, and then sort of for the next couple of years, that's what I was doing. Like I didn't have to do any marketing. I had clients dropped on me. And all I had to do was coach people. Yeah. So I got really good at being able to build relationships with people, get good results. Um, and then it, in the meantime, because sort of a couple of people lo local were seeing that, when I was about sort of 26, I got offered basically a, a coaching position at a semi-private gym. So again, I didn't have to do any marketing. It was just, you'll come and coach our clients. I think it was like 40 hours a week. Mm. Um, and so I was literally doing that. And then very quickly, Luke sort of was like closing Shredded by Science down and moving it to, to sort of a separate business. Um, and then he was like, right, just for sort of like the last six months, he was basically like, just set up your own payment link. Like I'm not taking any of it. So, yeah. um, and then sort of that was gone. And then it was like, because I'd set my price point at what he'd set at the time, which at the time, looking back, no one was really charging like, 135, 140 quid for online coaching. Like yeah, probably, that was like high end of standard. We were talking like point. five, six years ago. Yeah, for sure. Um, but obviously I knew nothing about marketing. Bearing in mind coming from 
sports direct, right? Yeah. You feel like you're fucking stealing a living, don't <laughs> yeah, you? Like definitely. charging 135 quid yeah, for, to go for from online like coaching. Three, four years ago, I, I was at sports direct doing nothing. And then I was doing the semi-private gym 40 hours a week and doing the online stuff. But then very quickly, well, not very quickly over time, then shredded by science clients sort of whittled away. Um, but I knew nothing about marketing. Like all I was doing was putting out content, cross your fingers and hope, put out content, hope clients sort of come to you. Um, and then I actually, I signed up to to work with Suck at OFB mm -hmm. and that's actually where we met at one of his weekends. Yeah, it was, yeah. um, so I remember you'd, I think you'd just like literally just taken Lewis on at that point. I think, Maybe. I think you just, know what? The timeline of that point is so hazy. It was like because, back end 2019. Yeah. Things were moving so quick for us at that point that I I don't even know when all that stuff happened. Yeah, I think you were saying, yeah, one of my mates is like getting involved. But you, you'd gone like zero to massive pretty quickly, like seven within like the first month or something. Yeah, I, remember was, you I think, yeah, because I think, what? That was in the summer, right? No, that was like November. November, December time. That was right at the back end of 2019. Right. So, yeah. So I'd, I'd launched GRT in April, March. Yeah. <laughs> April. April, yeah. Um, <laughs> if you know, you know. Um, started the business in April of that year. So seven months. So that was seven months in. Yeah, yeah. I was there, which- Still like, quite early, really. Still a fucking baby. Really and, early, like, yeah. Understanding how it all worked. Um, but yeah, that was that was like the first live course that I'd ever done. Yeah, and and do you know what? So I remember going to that, and I was I was earning like eight hundred quid a month from doing online stuff. I was doing all this semi-private stuff as well, but I was earning like within the first year, I think I was doing forty hours a week, and I was getting a grand a month. Mm. And when you break it down, it's like I think that just about covers minimum wage. Yeah, do you know what I mean. And so was that got, including doing the hours for the semi-private gym? Yeah. So yeah, so I was doing forty hours a week just in the semi-private gym. 37, 40 hours a week just in the semi-private gym oh. a week. Then I was trying to fit the online stuff in on top, like actually grow something. But in reality, it was like, you're just putting content out, got a few bits of social proof. You speak about training and nutrition and that's, and then it wasn't until I went to Suck's thing where really it was like, you can't just put content out and cross your fingers and hope. Mm. So to be fair, that weekend actually helped and I sort of ended up within a couple of months doubling where I was at. So it was like 15, 1600 quid. And then we sort of, had COVID that hit. So the gym was like closed and they they got rid of one member of staff. The other member of staff basically was like, I don't have Wi-Fi. So I was doing 30 hours a week of Zoom sessions. Oh, I feel for anyone Zoom that sessions. did that. I feel for, I, I, we've spoken to a few people that did the, the Zoom PT thing at and that you, point. You got to like turn up with it with like so much enthusiasm from like six in the morning till I think the last one was like eight till nine at night with like a four hour break in between, three days a week. And honestly, I look back and I think I totted up. I think I've done about a thousand hours of them. Mm. Like I said, and I That's just- ruthless. I look back and I think I have no idea how I've done that. Like, yeah. cause I would not do that now. Um, and then in the meantime, sort of, got a little bit of help with, or started to get some help with my business, managed to get it to a certain point. And then we sort of came round the, out of COVID. Um, and, and and within that sort of me and, um, me and Ellis had, had got together. And then right very quickly, I think we'd actually been together sort of, I think it was like eight months. And then it was like, she, like we were trying, we were, trying to be fair. And it was like, oh, we found out she's pregnant. And it wasn't until the September when we went to the scan thinking there's one, it was like, the woman sat us down and was like, just want to tell you something before we get started. I'm like, yeah, yeah, cool. And she just went, it's twins, real casually. <laughs> she like, didn't know what to do. I was sort of like cheering, like proper buzzing. Yeah. Um, so that was obviously a little bit of a shock. And in my head, I'm thinking, well, when they're here, I do not, like my plan was always, I want to leave the, the gym. I want my mm -hmm. own thing. I was like, I cannot be getting up at four in the morning to go to a gym when I've probably been up all night no, with them. Not, yeah. um, it turns out anyway, six weeks later, they sat me down and was like, we're letting you go. Um, basically, yeah, because nah. basically because they were like, look, we know you want to do something with your own business and it seems to be going quite well. Um, and I think that was like six weeks before Christmas or something. So I was like, do you know what? But they You said know full well full well that you got that boot because they knew you were having twins and they'd have to let you go on paternity and pay you. <laughs> well, Absolutely. There's no fucking way after all them years of you working there 
the point where you had twins was the point where they go, you know what? You've got really potential to do that. Was that was them trying to dodge a well, HR yeah, minefield? And, well, yeah, I, I don't know how that would have gone down. To be fair, um, and I'd have, I'd have called them on it. I'd be like, "No, I'm up here." And well, <laughs> they, they, do you know what? Do you know what they they said to me? It was at the end of October, and they said, "You know what? We're going to pay for November, but you'd have to come in." And I thought, do "You know what?" Like, I, I left, and I was honestly buzzing with that. Yeah, because I thought that's exactly what they wanted you to think. Honestly, <laughs> but but I was thinking right the next month, the whole of the next month felt like I was on holiday. Yeah, because I was just sat doing my own thing, and I was like, "Is this what it's like to like be a full time coach? Like, mm. I'd have to get up at five a.m. to go coach. Like, and to be fair." Within that month, I managed to make up the money I was missing out on. Yeah. Um, then obviously fast forward to sort of the 1st of March, 22, Ronnie and Ellie twins arrived. And then within that first month, it was like, I literally did zero work. Apart from probably within the first two weeks, apart from doing client check-ins and maybe reposting some old content and pictures of them, it was like, how am I going to make this work? And I remember speaking to you actually before they were born. And I remember you saying, like you saying to me, you were like, is the business in a position where like you're ready for the twins? And I was thinking, I was like, but how hard can it be? I know people say it's hard having kids, mm. but when it happened, I was like, right, this first night I've slept for 40 minutes. This is like bad. 40 minutes was the first Fuck night. Um, and I was like, this, this sort of can't go on. <laughs> like, I know you say it's sort of like, like having Nero having the dogs like, no, it's not. Nero sleeps like a baby <laughs> and he always has. But, but yeah, honestly, that was, uh, that was taxing that first month. Cause like five days in, we had to go back into hospital for two nights. Again, I think we slept like an hour over two nights or something. Yeah. And then I was sort of get. I, I got to the point where I was like, I say comfortable. It was like, if I have a couple of bad months, I'm going to be in a position where like, I don't really want to be. So it was like comfortable. I could cover all bills. I still had some money left over, but I'm like, this isn't, this isn't a business now. I was like, this is if like, for example, we went on holiday and I was like, I couldn't really do anything for 10 days. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like everything just stops. Nothing was organized in terms of content. And it wasn't long after that actually that I'd been putting it off and putting it off. And I thought, do you know what? I'll do it at Christmas. And then it was in like late October. And I thought, what I thought, what am I doing? I'm just like bullshit myself. So I was like, I literally messaged you off the back of, well, I think I kept seeing all your posts. And I was like, every single one, I was like, that is resonating with me. Like mm. that is speaking to me directly. And then I just messaged you and I was like, right, let's do it. And funnily enough, it was Stu that ended up on <laughs> the call. So when it came through and it said Stu McKenzie, I was thinking, nah, like, I swear he said it was Vicky. Anyway, it turns out it was Stu. Might have been when Stu started to, well, it was. It was it, we, we, we were away, weren't we? We'd all gone to, yeah. we were on Disneyland. Yeah, you were actually. And uh, Which, by the way, is literally the point where I put, like, I just looked around and I just, like, I, I woke up one morning. That was the first time where, like, Obviously, we were a dead small team at the time. It was like me, Shannon, and Vicky. Like, was, everything was still dead manual. I was still jumping on sales calls. Like, Vicky was helping out. Shannon was helping with some of the client stuff. When when we got Stu in, and then we had other people, like, helping with the clients, I remember, like, because the time zone is different, in it? Like, yeah, it we is. were waking up in Florida, and it was, like, midday, like, UK time. And I remember we were in fucking Disney World, and I woke up, and there was, like, just money, going into the account, people being onboarded into the program. And I like, was one of them. Yeah. And other people like being like, hi, right. Welcome to the program, blah, blah, blah. And I'm sat there thinking, oh my God, I've got, this is a fucking, re like, this is a proper bit. I'm in Disneyland making money and people are being onboarded to the program correctly and being looked after and just getting started. And I'm like, I've had nothing to do with it. Whereas not long before I'd been on all day and it was the total opposite. Yeah. Like, everything had to go through me. And if I didn't do it, nothing was oh, done. Don't get me wrong. That was the first holiday. Yeah. Oh yeah. The yeah. First one. Like, but it just shows, doesn't it? And, and see, I had that call with Stu and to be honest, we spoke about football for about 40 minutes. It's hard to not do that with you. Well, I get caught, well, I get pulled the, into the that. The thing is, he was like, do you want to sort of, in the end, I was like, what he even said, he was like, mate, we better go through this. Cause I was dead stare. I knew that I was going to sign up regardless. Um, and then he, he was like, right, this is the price. I was like, right. Yep. Yeah, cool. Um, and then literally as soon as, as soon as I got straight into it, obviously had the call with you. Um, and obviously the call was a little bit delayed because you guys were away. So I had to mm. wait sort of another week from, I think the day I signed up. And so I was just taking everything in sort of in the, in the group and watching some of the videos. And then obviously I got, Shannon's obviously been my, uh, one-to-one -one and, and helped massively. And then to be fair, 
it, it just sort of snowballed from there. Like I knew, because obviously I, I met Sai to go back a little bit in the May of that year as well, where through his strong media stuff, he'd come and done a load of videos for me. And he was like, mate, you should just niche down on dads. Just go mm -hmm. all in. And I was like, do you know what? That's a great idea. And for whatever reason, I put it off, half did it, but then you just end up confusing your audience. And then when I went all in within the first month, like it just sort of snowballed from there, really. Yeah. Big, big chip. Like just going, everything was, because was, the thing is over the years, I've coached a lot of dads, like a lot. I was going to say like, what, what do you think of the big things, why it snowballed? Like, I, I think because even before I became a dad, because I coached a lot of them because I managed to find solutions for what the problems were. And a lot of them were telling me what they were struggling with. But then once I experienced them myself, I was like, right, I can actually empathize with you now. Mm. Whereas before, like you you can see you do, but you, you don't, like you can't, you yeah. can't actually understand what it's like. Um, and then, yeah, obviously, like I say, I've got obviously a lot of social proof from working with dads. Um, and then as soon as, literally within a month of me putting it out, I was getting messages from people I've not spoke to in years saying, mate, this totally resonates with me. Like I'm loving all the, you know, all the, the route that you've gone down. So to be fair, I wish that I'd sort of done it five months before when he first told me to do it. When just taking it back a little bit, when you said you were you were waiting to Christmas and then you signed up in October, what was your rationale for waiting to? Because I know you probably told there's probably a reason in your head, right? Yeah, it, to be to be honest, I think I was just yeah. But what were you telling yourself? I think I was telling myself something along the lines of it's Christmas, I've got this tax bill to pay, I've got X, Y, and Z. And then in the end, I was like, well, I I back myself to make all this money back anyway and and more. Um, and then to be fair, that sort of happened quite quickly. So luckily I was justified in the decision I made, but it was, it was like, I was telling myself something, but re in reality, you know, you should do it. Mm. It's like, I have conversations with people now where like, they know they need to make a change. They know that there isn't a perfect time to do it. And I was almost looking at it through that lens. I was going, well, how can I say to people there's no perfect time if I'm then telling myself yeah. that with regards to my own business? So that's all it, that's what it was. And I thought, do you know what? Like, what am I waiting for? I've got two months from now till January. I want to be in a position where everything's running really smoothly by January when potentially that's going to be a really busy period, not trying to get the ball rolling then and almost miss the boat. Yeah. Do you think some of that, some of that confidence came from the, the situation where you know the gym let you go, where they give you that extra month's pay, and then you were like, right, my back's up against the wall now. You you'd done it, maybe yeah. not to the level that you've done it this time, not like to the to the extreme of it, but you've been put up against the wall. If you've got to make this money work, and you made it work, do you think that confidence came from repeatability? Yeah, definitely. And and the thing is as well, like as soon as we found out, well that we were having, we thought one, but especially as soon as it was twins, I said to, I said to Alice, I was like, when they're born, do you want to go back to work? And she was like, well, if I had the choice, no, because from them being born to them going to school is five years, I'm going to miss out on a lot. And just thinking about it from a financial standpoint as well. But she was like, no, like I'd, I'd want to ideally be off with them all the time. So I was like, right, you're not going back. I just decided there. And then I was like, right, well, you know, you've said you don't want to go back, so you're not going back. Like, so you are handing your notice in at the end of your maternity. And, and you know, luckily she's been able to do that. Um, and to be honest, I, I, I genuinely think I, like, I almost thrive off that, if you want to call it pressure, like if, and I found with, with speaking with other coaches since I've started mentoring them is if they're too comfortable, not a lot, nothing changes. There has to be some sort of pain point where there's like, the urgency mm. without that people can just float along really comfortable and they can go a few months and go well nothing's really changed but it's like well are you at the point and i'm not saying get to the point where if you don't make it work you can't put food on your table for your kids but i mean there has to be some sort of level of urgency i think whether that's like you know business related or you know with people that you know want to get in shape but in particular you want to make money you want to provide a good life for your family like that was it for me and, and that was sort of my part of my drive mm. does that make sense yeah you had a big enough reason to do it oh massive yeah if if you put in if you've been able to provide for your kids and make sure your missus don't have to go to work in a bigger or big enough push i don't know what it is i'd probably be in the wrong game and should have got a job well i was good well i was thinking that when you were saying it like that ability to thrive under pressure or like 
to back yourself when you kind of you put in a situation. I think he's one of the the signs of of a good business owner is that not everyone thrives in those situations, but you have to be able to handle those situations. And I've had these conversations within these last few weeks already is I, I honestly think one of the things that, and you'll know even better is that separates a lot of people is the ability to handle stressful situations. Yeah. Like when people are, Oh my God, I'm so busy. Like, or, or they feel overwhelmed. I think that comes down to they haven't got the priority straight. They haven't actually got a schedule and a structure. But I think when you do, if you're busy and it's productive, that's a good thing. Yeah. If you're tired because you've, you've doing loads of lead gen, for example, you've got loads of sales calls, you're having to produce content. That's a good thing. Good problems the, to have. The other, the other problem is, would you rather no one was interested? No one was messaging you back. You know, no one give a shit about what you're speaking about. Like, so when things start to get stressful like that, I think you've got to look at it as like a big positive mm. and, and, and think, you know, you've almost got to go through that to get to a more comfortable point where, you know, you can then get staff and who, who can take bits off your plate. But I think you've got, it's just like resilience, I think. I think there's a definitely a messy period when when you start to become successful in, in a business. Again, everyone will have very different ideas of what successful is, but like, it's a good thing that one of the issues that we have is when people come, come into the program, things pick up very, very quickly. And then very, very quickly, they're like, oh my God, there's fucking, I've got to now, you know, I wasn't prepared for, having to do six sales calls this week and on board four new clients and still do all the content. And cause everyone's like, Oh, well I'll do the content and then I'll message some people. And then they don't realize like when, when it starts to work, how much that work stacks up. And one of the big fires that we have to put out with people initially is like when they get that initial success. And I think sometimes it's expectations of them as well. They're like, right, but I still need to be emailing. I still need to be doing this. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Do the stuff that's making you money first. Just, do that, rinse that. Once that starts to slow down a little bit or you get better at dealing with that, then we'll add the other stuff in. But all your friends that you see doing all of that are doing all of that because they've not got clients to onboard and they've not got sales calls to do because they're not booking any. Exactly. So people end up worrying about all the fancy things or you know, all, all the, the little bits and pieces that look real shiny. And, and, and again, I have conversations with people all the time. It's like, right, what is the biggest bottleneck if you like for you in your current business right I want more clients right let's look at that and let's sort of reverse engineer it from there and literally just by focusing on that when they're like I've got all these calls coming in I've got all these people to onboard I'm like this is a good thing you wanted this like this, <laughs> this is, is what, what we, believe it or this not is this is what towards. you've been working towards and I think when it does snowball so quickly it's just like you say it's making sure people understand right don't worry about all this other stuff like you think is important you know the stuff that's actually like helping you to get people results and put money in your, you know, your bank account and therefore provide, you know, yourself with a good life. Let's just focus on, on this. And, and it does settle down because you get better at handling it. Like you, you never become, and I think you never really become not busy, just the tasks change each day. Mm. Like I remember you saying something similar where it's like, you have a list of things. The list is never done. You just tick off certain bits and then they get moved to the next day. Like you only have certain, you know, so many hours within a day and there's only, you can only have so many priorities. Yeah. It's like a revolving list of priorities. So the list never changes, but there's like, there's almost like, I always think, of, weirdly enough, football, I always think of it as like the Premier League table, right? So you have your list and your list just keeps growing and that's the whole table, but you have like your top six. Yeah. And you just got to, the top six change all the time. You just, if you, as long as you tick off your top six, you're cool. You keep going. And some people, it will be the same top six for six months. But if the outcome is what you want, you why know, change it? Yeah, you can't really complain. And then when they they stop being the priority, when the you know when it changes, then you change what you're doing. But you've made it slightly more difficult for well, you yeah, you know, you still do it. It was your fault. You, you had a part to play. You've done that as well as having twins at the same time. Yeah. So that was uh, like I said, that was the, that was a very interesting challenge, so to speak. Where like. I knew, I knew it was going to be hard, but I was like, I was n in no way prepared for when you're literally like the first night, 40 minutes. I remember it was about three in the morning and the, the only would sleep if we held them, right? They wouldn't they, like, and that was it. And so Ellis looked at me and was like, why don't you try and get an hour now while they're asleep? 20 minutes later, apparently they're screaming. And it wasn't until she was like full on slapping me across the face multiple times. I actually woke and 
that first, I look at back at that first month and it's just like a blur. And I look back, even if I was to go back and look through my content and stuff, I'm like, how patchy it was. Like there was no like consistency. There's no theme behind it. There's at least no, you like, did it though. Yeah, I still did it. Yeah. And, and I, I look back and I think, well, and I sort of take it into business now. Like when obviously I started with you guys was like, nothing can be harder than that. Yeah. So I no, think I if we're in a position now where like that, that's obviously much more manageable. Like, like I say, she, at least I was like all the time and, and I know which I'd rather be doing. Do you mm-hmm. know what I mean? So, and, and she sort of has given me the opportunity where it's like, right, like that's my role. Um, so, so yeah, as soon as it, it kicked off, like I knew it'd be a lot of work, but it was like, in reality, it's nowhere near as hard as yeah. that first couple of months was with them, to be honest. So I think it, it, sort of, it comes down to a mindset thing as well. I think you've got to understand that like you've got to put the graft in as obvious as that sounds. People think there's there's like a maybe a particular lead gen tactic or whatever. But again, at the same time, you've still got to put the graft in. You've still got to spend the hours speaking to people and onboarding them and all that. You know, that never goes away. How does it feel now running your own business, having twins, your missus not having, she hasn't got to go back to work? No, she? no, no, no. That's something that, not a lot of people think is achievable in the fitness industry. Like you think, yeah, if you ran like a construction company or something like that, yeah, it's normal that like, you know, gaffers, missus wouldn't go to work being a personal. Tra- and again, like not to simplify the job at all, but like being a personal trainer and being in that position, first of all, like when did you figure out that that was gonna, gonna happen? Like, did you sit down and draw out a number and it's like, right, that's what the business needs to make for you not to have to go back to work. Yeah. And, and, and to be fair, like, so obviously, you know, what I what I invested to you guys, I'd, I'd made back within two months. And to say that those two months were the first time I'd gone fully in on my niche as well, um, like how much it snowballed. Um, I wouldn't say I couldn't believe, like I always had faith in it. I trust in it. I knew I'd do the work, but it was almost like, this is what like I'd visioned. Mm. Um, but then like, like I say, the last sort of five months, or if I, you know, if I go back six months or even when they were born, compared to now, it's literally like night and day where I'm like, like financially, there's no, we, we weren't struggling, but it was like, I knew if I had a couple of terrible months, it was going to like be a bit more of a struggle. Whereas now it's a case of, I, like I was speaking to Sean about this yesterday. I completely forgot to actually look through how much I was earning this month. Um, and then I, I looked yesterday and it was actually more than I realized. Mm. Um, and I, and I, I look at, and again, not to make it all about figures, but I looked at the figures and I was like, if I would told myself like four or five months ago, I would be in a position where that's happening. And then I'm in the position that obviously working with you guys, helping other coaches now as well, I'd have been like, nah, like you dream it. So it's, it's, it's great to be in that position where, you know, I, I quite enjoy that responsibility where, that's my role. Like I take care of that side of things and 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 it then means that we, you know, we can have family time and, and I have structured work time and, and, you know, it works really, really well for us. Do you feel like that's surprising for anyone? Because somebody said this the other day, like, um, who was it? I think it was Rebecca, actually. When you told your parents that Simon was a PT and they were like, oh, <laughs> that's nice. Well, I remember, I remember... Because you, you and your missus haven't been together for a, a massive amount of time, No, right? no, so it'll be, it'll be about two and a half years now. Um, but like when when she got pregnant, it was eight months. Mm. So, but the thing is, we we got together in lockdown. People are like, well, how did that happen? You were in lockdown? Well, I was like, well, she was living by herself, so was I. You so. don't need to go through the- No, the, no, I won't, the go through, I, won't, I won't go through that, to be honest. I'll save that for uh, yeah. for off air, to be honest. But, but yeah, like I, more so people that had been like, other members of my family. I remember when I was younger and I was like, this is what I want to do. And they were like, and they were like, right, okay. And then it was sort of like, but when, when are you going to do something proper? Like when are you going to get a proper job? Like, and you've told the story a million times about like how your mum cried when you gave up teaching. And like, it was always like, oh, like you could maybe go and work here or you could do this. And I was like, no, no, like I'm going to do this. Um, and to be fair then, that since they've just sort of let me crack on with it. And to be fair, I've not really spoken to them too much about the actual amount of money I'm earning because yeah. I, I feel it's irrelevant, but yeah, I'm just sure. like, look, you know, we're in a comfortable position. At least doesn't have to go back to work. Everything's taken care of. Um, but yeah, I would definitely say there's, there's, there's almost like a, 
a stigma, if that's the right word, around, you know, a personal trainer. If someone says you're a P, you know, they're a PT, you almost get like that eye roll and, oh, you're one of them. Yeah, do you think her family might have been worried about that when like, I, she's pregnant with twins, right? And I don't... I don't think they were actually, to be fair, like they're, they're absolutely different class. And the great thing for us is they live, right, sound like nice people, they live yeah. right around the corner as well. Childcare. So honestly, <laughs> so like the amount of times that like Ronnie and Ellie have stayed out of there. So I remember the first night they stayed out and we'd had eight hours of sleep and I woke up the next morning. And I was like, I feel like shit. <laughs> Cause I didn't know. Like, I, I don't think we knew what had happened having that much sleep, but no, I, I don't think it was a concern for them, but definitely like, like I say, even, you know, potentially members of my own family or friends or whatever. I'm like, mate, that's not like a real job. Like people are working in, in like medicine or they're a lawyer or whatever. And I was like, that's cool. I'm just not going down that route. Like I never went to university. All my friends went to uni and I could have quite easily gone along with it. And I was like, that's not what I want to do. Even then I was like, I knew this was something I wanted to do. Um, So I'm, I'm sort of glad I sort of went against the grain and did, did as I pleased to be honest. Mm. Yeah, but you've worked hard for it as well and you like you've put the years and I remember obviously we, we met in 2019. So it's not like it's been a it's been a flash in the pan. There's definitely been a lot of Oh, exactly. Involved. And it was almost like it sort of because for that that whole period up to when I was let go by the gym, I was doing a lot of hours in the gym. During COVID, I was doing all them Zoom sessions. So it was almost like I was still managing the both. I couldn't give full effort to what I wanted to do online. It wasn't until I got let go by the gym where it was like right, well, I've made like that 1200 quid back in a month. Granted, at the, at the point, at that point, still didn't have a niche. It was just sort of, you know, general fat loss, if you want to call it that. Um, but then I, I think within the last, probably even 18 months to two years, I think very, very quickly, people that don't have a niche and try to generalize will all, almost just like get get lost in a, in a sea of voices of, of sort of similar, yeah. similar sort of things. Perfect. Well, Rob's going to stay on a little bit and we're going to do a YouTube video about his top tips for new parents and still managing your online business. So if that's you, definitely make sure you head over to the YouTube or if you're on the YouTube, you know, it's on the YouTube, then I'm sure that video will be out at the same time as this. Uh, Rob, where can people find you if they want to uh, have a bit of a nosy? So Instagram, just Rob underscore Zand underscore fitness is the place to find me. That's where I seem to spend most of my time. Nowadays, to be <laughs> as honest. most people would. Thank you very much, mate. No, thank you.